Hi everyone, this is Matt. I'm going to be taking the recently updated Esper Dance list to the Mythic Ladder. Um, notably, I've tried to shore up the matchup against Mono Red as I'm seeing a ton of it. So hopefully we run into a Mono Red opponent and the changes we made will help us come out on top. Let's see. So uh, if you didn't see the last video, I basically added three Birth of Miletus. I cut Ashiok, Treacherous Blessing, and a single land from the deck. Uh, the three Birth of Miletus should make up for the fact that we're one land uh, fewer. I should say I got one Treacherous Blessing, not all three of them. Okay, uh, this is definitely good enough to keep. We've got some early card draw and Oath of Kaya as removal. Dance of the Mance is a little bit unhelpful in the opener, but definitely will help us in the late game as long as we can make it there. So, as you can probably tell by the fact I'm still playing the same deck, that I really enjoy the way this deck plays out. I find it to be super consistent. Um, you really don't have any non-games where it just completely sputters, and there's a lot of key decisions to make. Um, it is pretty difficult to play optimally. I am definitely still working on that, but I enjoy the playstyle quite a bit. So here I'm going to try to dance to uh, Omen of the Sea on the end of their turn after we see what's going on. And if they counter it, it is not the end of the world. Alright, so it looks like we're playing Team or Reclamation. I think I want the Doom Foretold and the Castle Vantress. We won't need the mana for Kaya's Wrath in this matchup. So here, I think I want an Oath of Kaya to make sure we have plenty of fodder for Doom Foretold. Um, next turn is going to be the critical turn. If they play a fourth land and play Reclamation, we have to hope they don't have Counter Magic to back it up. They do play Thassa's Intervention and I think even some main deck negates. The nice thing is we have a backup Doom Foretold as well as the two Dance of the Mance. Alright, and now we've got three of a kind, Doom Foretolds. So we'll try to run one out here. Um, if it does get countered, we can do the same thing on the next two turns. And I feel really good about the fact that that resolved. Um, starting to pick away at their hand, put a little bit of pressure on their life total, feels really powerful. Um, Teferi resolving would pretty much shut off their entire game plan. The problem is if they counter to Fairy, we can't buy it back with something like Dance of the Mance. So I think probably attacking and doing another Doom Foretold this turn makes the most sense. So the last one resolved. Let's see. This time they decide to counter it. We could not have played around that by playing out our land. Alright, and here we've got them tapped out, so let's play a Birth of Miletus into a Doom Foretold. Could also consider playing Teferi and bouncing Gadwick here. That puts the most pressure on their life total and it turns off their main game plan of Wilderness Reclamation. That might be even better than playing the Doom Foretold here. I'm actually going to make that play. It feels like it's going to be hard for us to lose with Teferi on the battlefield. And we found the fourth Doom Foretold. Not too often do I see all four of them in one game, so that's always nice. So here they can Gadwick and draw two cards, but we'll be able to Doom Foretold, and that should be enough to really pull air this game. Alright, so Teferi was so important, they chose to just use Explosion to get rid of Teferi. 
Gonna play another Doom Foretold and an Agonizing Remorse here. Okay, so they do have two Expansion Explosion, but not enough mana to do much with it. Gadwick, kind of a similar thing. I think I mostly don't want them to gain life, actually, as we are pressuring them quite a bit. So I'm gonna get rid of Uro for good. And hit them with our 2 Another Agonizer Remorse is a good draw. Probably make a very similar play on this turn as we did last turn with Doom Foretold and Agonizing Remorse. And they've seen enough, so we're able to take game one against Team of Reclamation. Here, I like Dovin's Veto quite a bit. Being able to have a hard counter to Wilderness Reclamation is really important. Also, the Mystical Disputes seem very powerful. Um, oftentimes, they will be one mana counter spells. I could consider bringing in Kunaros as a way to sort of keep Uro in check, at least for a while. I'm not sure that that really is worth it, however. The other card that I could consider is D-Spark. It is a quick way to get rid of Wilderness Reclamation. I'm going to bring in both of those. And in terms of cards we want to cut, the Kaya's Wrath is terrible, so the three of those can get out of there. I think Oath of Kaya, we want to shave probably two of, and then shave two Birth of Miletus as well. And this feels like a pretty good configuration going into game two. So let's run it. Okay, and we only have two lands. We do have a couple key cards, including Dovin's Veto and Teferi. I think being on the draw with the two lander, it is worth keeping. There's so much that we can draw aside from a land that will also help us, like Golden Egg, Omen of the Sea, um, Birth of Miletus. So we're going to keep And it is nice to hit that land drop right away. Here I think just playing out the planes makes a lot of sense. That way they don't know that we're holding up counter magic. I, I'm actually considering countering this. I think slowing them down a bit is important. And since I have another Dovin's Veto, I kind of want to use my mana to counter this. It feels like they don't have green mana, so if we can keep them off green mana, that would be nice. All right, maybe that was just a misread. Um, they did immediately play the Breeding Pool. So here, I really want to try to run out to Fairy. It does not feel very likely to resolve. So I think I'm actually going to let this come into play tapped and just hold up Dovin's Veto for Wilderness Reclamation. And I definitely can't counter this one. Uh, big difference here being that when they are on three lands they're obviously very close to casting wilderness reclamation their next turn so it's too important to keep up Dovin's veto for that situation okay <clears throat> uh similarly i think i'm going to continue to hold up Dovin's veto here I don't like tapping out for something like Archon of Sun's Grace, especially when they could counter it. So I'm going to play this tapped, and then next turn I may run out to Fairy with Dovin's Veto back up. Alright, and that's a pretty good sign for us, I think. It also will make our Doom Foretold that much more effective. Oh, Agonizing Remorse is an excellent draw here. So let's go ahead and shock ourselves, playing out Agonizing Remorse and trying to find out what's up here. 
Now, depending on how they counter this, we may run out to fairy or we may hold it. The other option would be to try to counter this mystical dispute and force the agonizing remorse through. I'm going to let it resolve and I'm going to probably just pay the three and then they can counter it again and play wilderness reclamation, but they don't have a ton of land. So I don't think that's that bad. I like making them waste this card. Okay. Feels like they should have led with the negate, but maybe they just really wanted to clear the way for Wilderness Reclamation. But now I am going to Teferi with Dovin's Veto back up. So here I like bouncing Wilderness Reclamation. I definitely should have scryed first. That was a, a small mistake. And I like Castle Vantress as a way to um, just maximize our land advantage if we run out of things to play. It also does allow us to next turn go Archon of Sun's Grace into Treacherous Blessing. So I think what they're thinking about here is, yes, they can run out Wilderness Reclamation, but then because they can't do anything at instant speed, it doesn't actually give them that much of an advantage. So they're considering a different play. And I'm hopeful that with Teferi on the battlefield, Archon of Sun's Grace into Treacherous Blessing will be enough. So we'll play out the Castle of Antris and go for the exact plan that I mentioned. Note that they can't counter anything because of Teferi. And the pressure from the Archon will build up pretty quickly. They don't have too many turns to find an answer. We don't have any enchantments in our yard just yet. Okay, so they're going to draw a couple cards off of Gadwick. So, they are getting the benefit of being able to scry with Castle of Antris, but, um, but that's all Wilderness Reclamation is doing for them right now. I've got I think it's probably still worth getting rid of. Even that small scry advantage um, gives them better chances to find outs. So I'm thinking about Elspeth Conquers Death getting rid of Wilderness Reclamation instead of Gadwick. I am going to make that play, mostly because Gadwick can only tap things down on their turn as long as Teferi is out there. Yeah, and that's enough. They've seen enough. Um, Teferi really messes them up, and we get the win over World well, Team of Reclamation, moving us back into the top 500, and hopefully we can keep climbing with the new version of Esper Dance. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing below. I'll also post the updated deck list in the description, so check there if you haven't seen the video where I tuned it for the metagame. Take care. Bye.